All right, names. More reaction wheels? Uh, maybe. Uh, but uh, think of some names, please. You know, I'm horrible at naming these things. Uh, I'll... Maybe I should do the reaction wheel thing. Well, we now definitely have enough power. The whale, the drill, Erebus. Drill I don't like very much. Whale thrower might have the right idea. How many parts is launcher total? I can't access this right now. Well, let's uh, cancel that. Uh, well, three, no. Um, It's 152. No more suggestions. We're at Erebus. And Whale Thrower. Well, shall we defy the atmosphere? Unflippable. LV. <laughs> I don't I think I think maybe the atmosphere will hate me for this. I think I'm gonna call it the unflippable and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, I think this is uh, it, it's an interesting policy. Okay, uh, now what contract shall we try? Um, Gilly Drez sending sending a a probe to Drez shouldn't be a problem. Okay, uh, we had we had something we had a bot mission. Where's our bot mission? I think this will be underwhelming for this vehicle. Oh, this is more serious, yeah. Okay, this looks better. How much is the mass on this? 10.5? Well, that's a 20.8 ton launch. That's good enough. Make it able to return science juniors. Bring it back, you mean. Huh. Well, we can try that. Let's let's slap some slap some uh, some parachutes and such on. I mean, I don't know what the Delta V requirements are for getting something to Dres and bringing it back. I haven't done many Dres missions. Uh, the downward facing solar panels probably not a problem for Dres because Dres doesn't have the atmosphere to slow us down. We're gonna have to manually slow down. Got the terrier there. The parachutes might. Oh, this is the thing where we had the problem where the solar panels thought they were blocked by this. Uh, but we've got solar panels elsewhere on this, so it should be fine. Okay. I think this is ready to go. Check that you have all your science instruments on. Uh, good question. I don't think we, we haven't got the gravioli. We've got everything else. Small docking port. I don't know. Small docking port. Just to bring it back? I mean, that's a pretty expensive proposition trying to bring it back like that. Yeah, I guess that's a good place to put it. So uh, if we have to uh, refuel it, then the probe will have to dock over here. But really, reserve battery? Uh, don't worry about it right now. We'll, if I try to, well, we already have one actually. Uh, it looks like I thought of that for this mission, SC25T. Um, uh, no RCS thrusters. Why would I have RCS thrusters for... Uh, the docking port is only if we have to rescue it and bring it back home. Um, in that case, the the vehicle that's going to come and rescue it will have the... Oh, that's not closing right. Come on, close. There we go. Uh, the vehicle rescuing it will be the one that has the RCS thrusters. This is going to wiggle a lot, isn't it? Stock fairings have decouplers? Really? Oh, uh, no. 
No. Oh, we have the unfueled version as the... That's not good. You guys should have told me I had, uh, had subassembled the unfueled version. Okay, I don't even know if this thing will hold together. Good thing we have a lot of buffer funds. For future missions, add Spock stage on top of the Terrier stage. I haven't done the math to see whether that's a good idea or not. All right, well, we've got the engine power. It's looking quite grand, but it's highly likely to explode. I haven't tweaked down the gimbal. Let me give you guys all a chance. Uh, is this going to work or not? Ah, yeah, you... You mentioned the gimbal. I don't know. I'll cut it down to 50% on the outside engines. Verners. Well, while we're at it, I suppose so, yeah. Okay, Verners. I think it's time to try this out. Everything should be fine, hopefully. Uh, oh, uh, we need to time for Drez transfer. Let me do that. Even though we've got the dramatic music on already. Well, we certainly put everything we can on it. That's one thing we can say about this particular launcher. The question is, of course, whether it will work. We've done the fairings. So you guys said fairings will make things more stable. We'll see about that. We've got little fins. We've got strakes. We've got brakes. We've got everything else. We should have called it the works. That would have been a good name for it. Yeah, the thing about the Spark, that's that's the Rockamax 487S, right? I, I never remember the names. But uh, the Rockamax 487S, the reduced thrust of it makes it less valuable than it used to be. It used to have a 300 thrust to weight ratio, now it just has a 180. 180 is pretty average for the engines that we've got. Um, the mainsail has 250. LV-9 line only has uh, 120 though. Drez has a very eccentric orbit. So even if I say 82 degrees, which is what this looks like, that's probably not correct for the encounter because you can see how eccentric it, its orbit is. It's like Elu, it's a little bit tough. Worry about this mass on top of the size 1 node that is on top of the 2.5 meter fairings. Which size one node? I mean, we've got the 2.5 meter fairings, we've got 2.5 meter decoupler, we've got a 2.5 meter engine. It's only here that we get to 1.25 meter. And I've got struts, so I deliberately put struts to hold that together. I don't know if we could do any better. Uh, yeah, 196,000 is the cost. It ain't cheap. And I'm probably gonna regret this. But... I wanna do something interesting. I'm tired of all these dinky little launchers. Let's do something serious here. I think this looks serious. I'll do my best to save it. Oh, uh, you know, that's a good question. In the case of a disaster, should we save the payload or the launcher? I think we have to save the launcher, right? 
Let's take it out to the launch pad. Let's just hope it won't be called fireworks. <laughs> Evening, Kerbal Space Safety Captain. Well, you're just in time. We need your help. We're not entirely sure what we're about to launch is safe. Node on the upper side of the 2.5 meter fairing is size 1. Well, that, the, the node on the upper side of the fairing is a small, small node. That sucks. I mean, I already know that we can't attach struts to the fairing. So there's not much I can do about that. Launcher has priority. Well, it's certainly expensive. Well, the music seems good. Let's just go. Oh, it's got some shakes. Oh, I feel it shaking. Holy, no, 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 wow. Um, hold on, let me, I, I can't turn it right now. Let me kill the... We're gonna go straight up for a while, folks. I can't hit 20 there. I might wanna just shut those off. Okay. Turn, 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 turn. Why does everything have to be wobbly? It's it's not wanting to turn at all. It wants to head back vertical. Every time I turn it towards the lower pitches, it wants to head back towards the center prograde, I guess. I guess there is a lot of aerodynamics forcing that. But... Yeah, it's not very friendly right now. Then again, I, I haven't met a launcher in this, except for my tourist launcher. The tourist launcher works nicely. If you've seen the test of that uh, during the aerobraking missions, Remember, we did the dual air braking mission and the, the EVE air braking mission, and those were launched in the Taurus launcher, and that worked nice. Why can't any other large launcher be as nice as that one? Rename it Unturnable. The 48 may have been nerfed, but the extra stage will give me extra Delta V. Um, well, that's something I would have to assess. <laughs> it is living up to it. Well, it's not flipping. This, this is true. Black Hawk has declared that this will work. Well, it has to have enough fuel left over. Uh, what altitude do I uh, release the fairings? I don't have much detail on this. I assume 30 kilometers is fine. I'm gonna have to turn it more. Oh, it's shuddering like anything. Okay, I'm gonna release the fairings now. There they go. It's a little bit dark. Um, there we go. Okay, well it held up through that part of it, but I don't know if we can bring it back down now. I should probably turn down the engines for a sec. Yeah, it's got one of these things going. I hate that. You know how my trajectories usually look. But we'll try to bring it back down anyway. We won't get into full orb. Well, we might not get into full orbit anyway. Let's find out. Turning very, very... I've got... You can see yaw is all out here. 
We might need more reaction wheels on this thing. I mean, if we don't trust the engine gimbling, of course. And probably trusting it is not a great idea. Can I reach the reserve tank? Let me see. Uh, okay, those are the outside ones. That one emptied. Okay, that's not according to plan. Wait, wait, wait. Which which tank is still full? That's that's not good. Um I did not expect that to be our final tank. Oh, and this tank still has fuel. That's very complicated. Okay, uh, well, let me move the fuel to the bottom tank as planned. Okay, we're going down. Let me complete this. Now that I've reserved the fuel. Oh, looks like we're getting into orbit. Well, we're in orbit. Okay. Let me make sure we still have the reserve fuel that I wanted. Did that do wrong? Okay, that's fine. Okay, I think we can decouple the mission. Why is this tank short? Or... Oh! Oh, it's like that. Oh, we hadn't filled it up properly. Okay. Oh, I remember. I remember why that was. Okay, we're a bit short on fuel on this mission, but that's... I guess that's fine. So, panels, can you extend uh, when I light the lights? Yes. I was mainly thinking of the Verners for landing, not for liftoff. Okay, um, we're gonna go over to the other side and then retroburn. Meant that they only work when RCS is active. Yeah, yeah, I know. I wasn't thinking of using Verners during the the launch. Yep, the music is going well, I think. I'm just gonna go for 30 kilometers. I think that'll bring us down somewhere. Let's see. Oh, that's the end of that. Okay. Unlocking the reserve tank, if I can see it. This is a little bit late, so I think I should go lower than 30. I'm gonna go for 26 maybe. We're probably gonna end up in the water over here. Okay. Okay, time warp to daylight, please. Too bad I don't have a probe core that can hold retrograde properly. I, I should have unlocked the hex. That could do it. Well, since I expect to hit the water to the east of the KSC, I can just add the brakes right now. Might as well slow down. Fuel right now is reserved purely for touchdown. We're not going to use it to correct our position, and it's futile anyway. We're gonna overshoot. We're definitely, we're definitely gonna overshoot. Just aiming for the water somewhere over here. Well, that was a smaller payload than I was expecting to try out with this. Obviously, I was aiming for 30 tons, even 36 tons, and we just tested one with 21 tons or so. And that barely worked out, but then again, it was because I couldn't turn properly initially, so maybe we'll be able to do better. We'll have to see. 
Okay, well, there's the KSC, and we're passing far overhead. Let's get surface on. Well, I'm in as much suspense as anybody else. wonder if these are going to break off. Uh, hold on. They should at least be controlling roll. Come on. They're not really... Well, they're almost trying as hard as they can. We've got the roll program. Uh, not program. Problem. Uh, the roll problem is one that I had with FAR at times. Gotta take the brakes off. I don't think it'll cause a problem. Far Under FAR it would. With FAR, uh, this kind of roll uh, snapped our launch vehicle into many, many pieces. But... This might not be a problem. It's not even really trying to use diverters to do anything. We're not slowing down very much. We're decelerating very slowly. I'd really like to see a lot more deceleration at this point. Keep in mind, uh, again, I've tried out a much larger launcher with the Taurus B. The Taurus B is, uh, is a 550 ton launcher on the pad, and then once it gets back down, it's heavy. Yeah, we can't do uh, anything but physical time warp in the atmosphere, so roll won't stop like that. Expect the top to blow up? Uh, it looks like it, yeah. Wonder why that is. We should put a stack separator th there then. Instead of a decoupler. A stack separator, we wouldn't have that attached. But I don't know about the fairing. Is it the fairing? What is causing the heating there? I don't know. We are not slowing down. Uh, the air brakes overheat. Under 30 kilometers, the air brakes overheat. Yeah, I, I pulled them in because I knew they'd blow up. Get ready for explosions. Loud noises incoming. It's having a heck of a time trying to remain retrograde. I'm not manually controlling this right now. Put on the bottom. Well, we've got three open tanks to put it on the bottom. I guess that's doable. Is it necessary though? Because that's extra mass. I'm betting that the fins are going to explode. We'll call that nominal. Fins exploding is always nominal. Um, anything else exploding might be a problem. Well, not those, not that stuff at the top. The service bay is the last very important piece. I'm, I'm sort of surprised these red bars haven't done anything horrible to us yet. Um, things are calming down. I think our chaos might actually have been disappointed at this point. We'll see. It's just the way KSP handles heat transfer. Well, it's a mystery to me. Wait for it. We are now at parachute deployment altitudes. Volley 1. Okay, volley two. Gear down. SAS off, RCS off. 
Okay, uh, you know, was SAS doing all the rolling all on its own? Am I rolling it? I wasn't trying, but I think SAS was rolling it. Air brakes, good point. Okay, I'm gonna manually run the engines, all the all the good things in life. Oh, crud, we started going up? That's more engine power than I thought we had. Wow, well, 9 point, well, 10 now. But uh, yeah, that's not too fast. I thought we'd be faster. I should, uh, well, if once we get action groups, I should action group some of the engines. Okay, moment of truth time. We have hit the water. It's not flopping. We've hit the water and it's not flopping. Recover vessel. Might be because it was it's going in reverse SAS doesn't invert controls. Ah. Yeah, landing gear is helpful in water, very much so. Okay, here's how much we got back. 113,000 funds. Now, it initially cost uh, 190, but part of that was the actual mission. Uh, so the fuel costs are quite severe still. But uh, we managed it. We managed it. Our <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to bring it down any steeper than that. Uh, I think that was about as steeply as I want to bring the unflippable down. But, uh, yep. That part is successful. Let's continue on with the Drez mission. Maybe deactivate the fins for re-entry in the future. Uh, once we get action groups, maybe. Because I want to be able to use the fins at some point. And of course they've got the weird symmetry because I've got bilateral... I've got the two double three-way symmetry going. I don't want to do anything too annoying. Okay, here we are with the Dreads mission, and we'll see how far we get with this. I'm planning to end in about 40 minutes or so, so just a heads up on that. Assuming we get anywhere with this Dreads mission. Oh, that... Okay, yeah, that, that that's... That looks like more than 82 degrees. Do I have asteroid tracking yet? I don't think so, otherwise I'd see some asteroids. Yeah, we don't, we don't have asteroid tra tracking yet. Do I already have uh, action groups 1 through 10? I didn't think so. I'll have to check. Maybe I... I don't think so. Okay, let's see how far off we are. Because like I said, Drez has that weird orbit. I'm going to try and uh, meet it at that uh, ascending node there. And uh, KSP doesn't want to admit that I can do that, but I can sort of see something forming. Don't mess with me, KSC. KSP. Maybe I should just try the normal Holman transfer. But with a 5 degree inclination, it's a big correction. Let me, I guess I'll skip the correction and try for this after all. Doing this any further, I might regret it on the Drez side, because it's going to require me to do more of a burn to correct the orbit at Drez. I'm a little bit worried about that. How much would a... Let me see what the adju adjustment would cost. Uh, 410, I guess I'll go for Norman ha normal Holman transfer then. 410 is not too bad. So I'm going to line it up as if it was a Holman transfer and then I will fix things. Because I'm getting impatient. Okay, that's a straight up Holman transfer. Alright, I'll fix it up after we do this. Wait one year to get a better position? No, there's no wait one year to get a better position. One year will not give me a better position. The only thing that can get me a better position is tweaking this a little bit. We're in 
I mean, maybe a few days would get me a better position. We're partly correcting inclination here, that's why it's not prograde. And the reason why it's okay, sort of okay, to correct inclination is because at the point we were, we were closer to descending. No, now we're not, obviously, because I've... That's the plotted orbit right there. Okay, well, that's closer than any of the other plots before, I think. Or at least it looks pretty close. Well, that doesn't. It's messing with me. Well, let me do a test burn. It won't let me make a maneuver node where I want to. Oh, test burn doesn't work. Oh, yay. Okay. Uh, not in 26 seconds, though. Alright, now let's do this. This is not working nice. Okay. Guys. I think I... I think I need to take this up on a different day. We are going to leave our Drez mission heading out. Because I'm clearly not relaxed enough to tweak maneuver nodes today. So... Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave too, so... Yep. On a, on a successful launcher test, I don't want to mess this up right, right now. Because it looks like I'm doing that. So, on a successful launcher test and bringing back our long-lost Kerbal around Lathe, I'm going to pause right here, and then on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, at 11 p.m. GMT, I'm gonna come back and I'm going to try and get this probe to Drez. Uh, and hopefully my maneuver node tweaking skills will be with me at that point. Alright, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this stream, and uh, good night everybody.